All right, so it's on live. Hello, everybody. This is Junichiro Orikawa, <clears throat> and this is the weekly <laughs> uh, tutorial live for Houdini, which is called as Houdini Algorithmic Live or uh, Houdini Algorithmic Live. Um, <clears throat> I've been pausing the live stream a uh, few weeks because. I had a exhibition in Tokyo <coughs> together with the uh, graphic designer called Fukaji Hiromasa-san <coughs> and the exhibition exhibition just finished so I I think I'm gonna have a little time for another live stream <coughs> from this week okay so these this is the exhibitions we did making <coughs> plotter drawing based graphics uh, based on the geometry made in Houdini <coughs> and also we also had tried creating a 3D <coughs> pot <coughs> pottery uh, from uh, <coughs> uh, by scanning a by doing the 3D printing the geometry as a <coughs> cage then used it to create a real pottery okay using the real <coughs> the method the uh, traditional method for the pottery so so there are f lots of new ideas being tried out in these exhibitions i hope if anybody's here have uh, had a chance to come visit came visit <coughs> well hopefully we'll be able to do uh some other exhibitions <coughs> in the future but that's what I was busy for. Okay. And in the exhibitions, I made a AR application for a mobile, which <coughs> you can use to you can use the app to <coughs> um, overlay the three D geometry that I made in Houdini through mobile phone like iOS and Android. And today I'm going. I would like to show the process how I exported the 3D animated geometry to <coughs> be used for mobiles for especially for iOS and Android <coughs> yeah, through a game engine called Unity and a method called uh, VAT stands for Vertex Animation Texture <coughs> And I'm going to use the SideFX Labs plugin in order to export the VAT. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of blogs or videos explaining how you could use VAT in Houdini, but uh, specifically, there are th I had some problem or issues exporting it for mobiles. <clears throat> uh, I, there are, there were a few things that I need needed to tweak in order to work correctly especially for this kind of dynamic remeshing geometries or animations uh, such as flute like uh, animations so that's what I would like to show you today <coughs> um, it might be mm, too easy or it might be there might be some reference out there explaining the same things but at least I couldn't find it so let me just share it with you also we're gonna create some simple dynamic remeshing animations uh, for that purpose and the topic that I choose is some simple uh, lava lamp like animations like these and it's also looping infinitely so that you could repeatedly show it in mobile phones now the installation came from a lava lamp if you know if you have ever heard about it <coughs> this is the lava lamp so you have I guess this is the oil and using as a hourglass <coughs> and made a really interesting metable like shape inside <coughs> these containers to uh, use it as our hourglass or I'm not sure if it's being used as our hourglass maybe it's just for the lamps but 
these are things that I like and pretty easy to create so that's the <coughs> test case for this um, workflow so first I'm gonna create I'm gonna show you how you can create this kind of animations in Houdini then show you how you could export it as a VAT vertex animation textures then how you could import it into unity and how you could set it up to build it for a mobile hopefully I'll be able to <coughs> show the building part as well so that uh, I could uh, show it on my real device in my case I am using iPhone 14 so uh, hopefully I'll be able to show that yeah so this is the capture of my phone yeah so hopefully I'll be able to run that the same animations in my phone all right so that's the plan hopefully it's gonna go well <clears throat> let's see all right so let's do this so if I am going to create the animation from scratch now using Houdini it's gonna be really simple but in order to make an infinite uh, looping animations there are some tricks you need to do so hopefully I'll uh, it's something you could be interested in let's see so starting from a empty geometry node <clears throat> first I'm going to create a some bounding box which I'm going to show the animation inside or the uh, geometries inside just as a guide okay and start off with a sampling the points inside scattering the point inside determining how many balls you wanna sh uh, have in one frame okay let's uh, create a volume out of this box first then use a scatter node to create a bunch of points random number of points uh, might be too much <coughs> Let's also create a controller to control some parameters for this animation. Uh, and I'm going to name this controller. Let me also save this. And first, let's give a parameter to determine how many points you want to have or how many balls you want to have. So, number. <coughs> Oh, my keyboard is not working correctly. Hmm. Let me see why. Okay. Doesn't work. My keyboard is not working right now. <coughs> not sure why. Okay, it is. But it's not inside Houdini. Wait a minute. I cannot click maybe I was in oh yeah it always had this is the problem with the Houdini because it doesn't accept two byte characters so it's always killing me all right so again where was I so number of balls Let's say from 1 to 100. Copy the parameter and paste it right here. Paste relative reference. Okay. Alright. So now, <clears throat> in order to create a lava like shape or metabol like shake, I am just going to use a metabol as it is because it's the simplest way to create that and in order to use the metabol I can use copy two points to copy each metabol shape the base metabol shape to each point now <clears throat> this is just creating a big blob 
which I don't really want. I need to have some kind of a silhouette for each balls. So I'm going to change the kernel function to something that does that, something like blin model, which does uh, create a little bit of a silhouette in between the balls. Now, obviously the size is a bit too large for each ball, so let me also <coughs> Uh, change those sizes a little bit okay and also let's see what weight does okay currently it doesn't really make any sense so let's keep it as two and I'm going in order to change the size of the balls you can set a P scale to each point so let's do that I'm going to create a point wrangle and Probably making the size of the ball for each balls to be random is nice to have. So let's create some random values for the random size. <coughs> okay, so this will create a 0 to 1 random values. And from that, I would like to create some <coughs> size range. So for the size, I like to use a fit function for the randomness and let's create some parameters for the size range. So min size to <coughs> max size. Okay, where is it? So let's start with 0.2 to something like 0.6. See how it goes. And I need to set a P scale in order to make the make each ball size dependent on those size value. Alright, so it's a bit low res. Let me try to create upscale some weight. Let me go with this three. Okay, now it still looks low res because in order to make it smoother, I need to use a convert node to convert it back to a mesh. So set it to polygon for the convert to parameters and increase the U value which will gradually create a <coughs> smoother geometry. Now let's go with five. Okay, looks nice. So <coughs> after this, you could play out with minimum size and maximum size, what will be the best for the setup. I'll just go with two to six for now. And <coughs> weight to be 3. I mean this could be another parameters you could change. So let's have three parameters added to the controller. One is minimum size, one is max ma ma maximum size, and the other one is the weight for the metabol. Okay, so I'm just going to drag and drop these parameters. <coughs> Metabol weight and min size and max size. So minimum metabol size. <coughs> In this case, size mean radius. Uh, max metabol size. Max. Max meta size, right? Okay. <clears throat> now it's good for a looks good for a static image, but uh, it doesn't really work as an animation yet. So let's see how we could create an animation, and especially how you could create an infinite looping animation. Probably going making these balls go upward. <coughs> 
going back from the bottom then just keep looping uh, like uh, how do I say the <clears throat> like in the factory okay so, uh, so oh, how do you call it belt conveyor or something like that <clears throat> so let's tweak some size for the maximum okay so <clears throat> in order to move those metal balls upward you can just move those points upward and at some timing if you make these point go back from top to bottom <clears throat> um, you should be able to infinitely create a looping animated points but there are a few things you also need to care about now let's see what we need to do <clears throat> Let me admit, rename this to P scale. All right, and let's create a simple animation first. And I am not going to use a solver for that because I want to make it infinitely looping. So it will be better if I could, if we, if I would just use a frame-based parameter values. Okay, <coughs> so. I'm gonna use I'm gonna create another point wrangle after setting the P scale for the point and call this animate. All right. <coughs> and what I'm going to do here is to mm, move this point upward somehow. So and in order to do that um let me see how it can do that you could just first of all you could create a frame based value in this case frame divided by f and which will create a value in between 0 to 1 based on the current frame till the end okay <clears throat> and using this f i would like to uh use this to determine the point positions. <clears throat> now, the total bounding size of this container is one right now because I'm using the default box, which the size is equal to one on X, Y, and Z. And I wanna move the point to Y direction in this case. So <clears throat> the, the maximum distance within this box in y direction is one <clears throat> so I, will, I would like to make conditions when the point is going out of the box then coming back from the bottom m meaning moving the distance equal to one to the negative y directions and <clears throat> going to the y positive direction again to animate now let's see how I would do that. <coughs> you could just update the y value by <coughs> f value uh, multiplied by the size of the box but currently it is equal to 1 so you could just hard code the size but let's say if you there is a chance that you might want to change the <coughs> bounding box so I'm going to refer to that box so that I could parametrically or procedurally change the box later so <coughs> let's get the minimum and maximum of the bounding box from the second input as well as the box size from the second input all right now <clears throat> what I want to do now is to multiply this f by the size of the bounding box in of and in together with the y coordinate y coordinate size multiplied by f <clears throat> 
So if the f is equal to 0, then you get 0. If f is equal to 1, then you get the size of the box, in this case, 1. So it's moving from 0 to 1. It's adding from 0 to 1 based on the f value. Now, if you look at it, if you look at how it moves, so it just goes up like that. Simple. But the things that I want next is as soon as the point goes out of the box, I want to make this point go back from the bottom. Okay. So in order to do that, <coughs> you need to have some kind of uh, conditions here. So if y <coughs> is more than the max of y, then make the update the y position, the y coordinate to min y. So this is the bottom uh, coordinate and this is the top coordinate of uh, this box. <coughs> okay, now let's see what happens. Okay, something is wrong here. I think I got a might need to fix this. So what's happening here? So okay, it's being fixed to minimum y. I shouldn't use equal, right? So I should, um, I should rather use a subtraction by the size of the box. In this case, y, call, y size of the box. Okay, so in order to reset the position. Now, now it goes well. Okay, so right now, uh, the point has been made to go looping from top to bottom, but it's not enough in order to use it for a metal ball animations because if you see it see it in metal ball animation you start to see some um, weirdness as you can see the ball just jumps because the ball has some the uh, ball is not just a point but you have a radius <coughs> from the point so you also need to consider uh, the size of these each balls okay so it's not really looping uh, cleanly uh, as you can see so in order to make and I also want to clip the geometry with the box maybe just the top and the bottom to make it kind of interesting <coughs> well, I mean it doesn't really need to be clipped but I do, uh, that's what I would like to make as a style. So first let's just clip this geometry by the size of the box. Then, <clears throat> especially on the top and the bottom. And then think about how we could create an infinite looping animation. Now in order to clip, just gonna use clip. It's the simplest way. Okay, so first the bottom part. Uh, I need to make a distance which is equal to the size of this box, uh, the half size of this box, which I could use maybe this. I might want to change this box to something else later, so let me <coughs> make this box named as bounding box and try not to rely on the parameters of this box itself but try to get the parameter out of this null node so in this case I could use a function like bbox in expression for this distance let's also make sure that this bounding box is centered especially if even if the original geometry of this box is uh, out of the center 
you want to reset this position back to the center when you are accessing to this bounding box so let's make sure I'm going to create a set uh, use the transform node to move it to the pivot position <coughs> Or the not the pivot, but the how do I say the the centroid of the geometry. Okay, now it's been reset to the center. Okay, this is just to make sure that I can input any kind of geometries instead of boxes. Okay, now <coughs> going back to the clip, I could now use a function like b box and the things that I want in this case is the y size the half of the dy size is the one the value that I want so <coughs> first access to the node that I want to refer to which in this case a bounding box then write the <coughs> y size size multiply by 0.5 okay oops I think I'm missing something unable to evaluate expression bad data type for function operation okay I think I might be missing something <coughs> let me redo this B box so you have two parameters right one is the node one is the type okay so um, bounding box and the y size does it work okay now I want to make it as 0.5 and I want to make it negative okay now it works alright so it's been clipped in the bottom of the box like that let's also close this uh, cap this I mean filling fill this hole here so that I could uh, render it as a flat shape I'm gonna use a poly fill and let's also make a triangulated shape right because sometimes the quad dirateral doesn't work so let's make it triangles triangle fans uh, yeah triangle is fine okay now let's do the same thing for the top part I'm just gonna copy these And for this, another clip, I'm going to make the direction to negative 1. Then set the bounding box size to positive. Oops. Wait, is it still? Yeah, I think it's still negative. Uh, size multiplied by 0.5 is fine. Okay. Now do the same polyfill. Sure. All right. Now, <coughs> does now clip with the box size of the box. Now you can now clearly see that the geometry is jumping. So we need to fix that. And in order to fix that, what you could do is to copy the exact same point um, list, just as you are seeing right now inside a box like this one to the top part and the bottom part so just copying these point set just by moving it one to the upper direction and one to the bottom direction will create a repeated uh, geometry <coughs> repeated um, seamless um, geometries in the um, border 
and in the end that will create a seamless transitions from top to bottom so let's try that I'm going to create another point wrangle I mean you could do it all in one node but just to make it clear what I'm doing <clears throat> I'm gonna create another point wrangle it's not that expensive to do so should be fine now I'm gonna create two loops uh, two iterations for the loop one is for the positive direction and one is for the negative direction so starting with negative one then end as positive one and add two for the iterations so you will have negative one and positive one as an i value inside the loop so you have two iterations as a loop okay and i'm just going to and also let we also need to know the size of this bounding box again so connect this let's get that bounding box information get b box size <clears throat> all right now move the point y coordinate or I need to make a new point so um, let's make a new point positions which is derived from the current point position and update the y direction <coughs> by multiplying b size dot y by i so it'll be either positive one or negative one <coughs> okay now once you have created the new point positions it's time you are going to place it as a new point so new point add point zero <coughs> position okay there you go and if you play it it's gonna looks like this and you're always going to have a same seamless edges or same seamless borders uh, for this box okay which will able to create a seamless metable shape now I also need to transfer the P scale from the original point so let's also do that so set point attrib P scale new pt copy the current p scale <clears throat> right now let's see what happens i play it now you can see that it is repeating seamlessly so this is how you could create a infinitely looping animation now it's a bit slow to test out so let's make the resolutions a bit low like four all right okay and in order to uh, bring it to a move val you also need to have it have all the geometry as triangles so let's make it triangulated by using the by node maybe I should do it before using the clip so maybe somewhere around here after converting it and I always use this one avoid small angles to have uh, the size of the triangle as big as possible okay all right and for the polyfill <clears throat> in default settings the points are it's gonna be merged or fused which is going to create a 
some smoothen out, smoothened normals around the corner, which I don't really want because I want the flat shape to be crisp. So I'm going to use unique points for the polyfill. Just for the <coughs> visualization. Okay. So far so good. Now, one thing that looks boring for this setup is that um, every ball is moving in the same speed. It's not that interesting, is it? Might might going to be really interesting if you could randomize the speed of the balls. So let's see how we could do that. We could actually do that by <coughs> modifying this part where we were copying the points on top and bottom directions and also modifying the animate where we were setting where we were actually moving the points so based on the speed of the <coughs> uh, ball how much it goes up or up to uh, to the y direction um, based on those speed you could actually increase the number of copy copies to the bottom and top and bottom <coughs> If the f speed is equal to 2, then you could have two copies of points on top and two copies of point and bottom. And then you'll be able to have still have a seamless um, animations, even if, you, even if all the points are having the different speed. The limitation is that the speed has to be integer value because <coughs> the speed has to be the multiplication of this um frame i mean sh should ha should uh, has need to be uh, divided with these frames so if the speed is equal to 1 then it's using the whole frame to go from up bottom to top meaning moving by 1 if the speed is 2 then it's going to use the half of the total frame in this case 120 to move 1 and another half, another 120 to move one again. So in, in the end, you are moving two <coughs> in total. So, and if you make the speed 2.5, then the point will just stop at 0.5 in the end. That, uh, which if you go back from the f end frame to the first frame, the the seamless well is going to be lose lost so it always needs the speed always needs to be uh, integers <coughs> okay uh, in this case you could multiply the speed here sure so in order to create the random speed it might make sense to link it with the size of the balls probably uh, if the size is e is smaller then it could go faster <coughs> um, and if the size is bigger then the size it goes slower maybe that make that makes sense in terms of the how <coughs> mm, oil moves I'm not sure maybe not but uh, it looks natural it might looks natural so let's try that based on the scale of the <coughs> balls let's try to set the speed so in order to do that we need to access the size itself somehow which is set previously here as a p scale so we could either use p scale as it is or we could have this random values in a different attribute and use it maybe that's better because this is 0 to 1 normalized so, uh, yeah so regularized normalized normalized <coughs> so I'm gonna create the random attribute called rand and 
just transfer this attribute transfer this random value from 0 to 1 to a random attribute which will create a float attribute for each point which is also used for the scale All right. okay and let's try to use that inside animate <coughs> okay so based on the random values I want to make a speed so <coughs> I'm gonna use a fit function to remap this from remap this into a some speed value probably having a parameter like minimum speed to maximum speed and as I told you it needs to be integers Okay, so minimum should be equal to 1, I guess. So let's make this range from 1 to 10. And the maximum, let's try with 5 for now. Okay, now I should be able to get some random values, or maybe let's change the variable name. Fit float speed. And right now it's still a float value, so let's use the floor to make sure that it is going to be converted into an integer. Like that. <coughs> okay, so in this case I guess I could just say int speed. Now <coughs> I'm gonna multiply that to here, how much it each ball should move in that direction. Now if I play it You could see some of the points are moving really fast. All right. And if you look at the copy set, you could see some of the points are going off the boundary. So that's the reason why you need to also copy, uh, make the bounding box bigger for those uh, points which has a speed more than one. So if the speed is equal to 2 then you need to have two bounding box on top also two on the bottom based on the speed so <clears throat> let's do that and again in order to do that you need to have that value transferred from animate to copy set so this is the speed that I've created and you need to have this information used in this copy set so let's have that as an attribute again so for this reasons maybe just packing everything in one point wrangle might make sense but yeah just to make it clear what uh, what i'm doing all right so let's check the speed yeah so there are values from one to four good okay now going back to the copy set let's access the <coughs> speed attribute right then the place where I'm going to use this is how much I'm going to copy the bounding box and this is currently a loop for one bounding box copy uh, for top direction and bottom direction so what you could do is just add another full loop a nested loop <coughs> for the number of speed and if it's equal to one you're just doing the same things as before if you if it's two you are just looping two times on bo both bottoms and top all right and you need to use this n somewhere which should be here i guess i could i could say multiply by <coughs> n plus one i think yeah, so and if n is equal to 0, you're having 1. 
which is same as before it's equal to one then the n becomes two moving <coughs> uh, twice the distance okay let's see so it became like this and if I play it okay I am not sure if it is working correctly but let's see by enabling the visuals and if it's looping seamlessly then things are working fine <coughs> now it's a bit slow so let's disable some of the I mean make it make the make it a little bit low res just for testing okay so far so good and now I, s I can see that the larger metaballs is moving faster I probably want to make the smaller metaballs moving faster but at least it is moving seamlessly so that's good yeah let's wait till the end and yep everything seamless All right that's good now let's change the speed so that the smaller metaballs go faster so should I should just change it and replace this here to here Oop. <coughs> all right let's see okay better okay now let's try to bring those parameters that I added to this new controller <laughs> mm. one is the scale which I already have I guess yeah one is the speed which I haven't which I don't have it right now so let's bring that so minimum speed maximum speed and I guess that's it so <coughs> minimum speed so I, I guess it's taking a little bit of time to create after all but uh, we don't really want to bring any boring animations right so <coughs> all right so i guess that's it so i think i am good with the the animation let's also try to set some material and <coughs> finish this up to send it for a unity uh, using vat so in terms of the material I'm, since i would like to show it on mobile i'm gonna i would like to use a really cheap shaders so i'm going to use a matcap for that reason matcap is uh, kind of an easy way to shade the geometry by using one texture as a map sample target now <coughs> i have downloaded one matcap looks like a normal map let me show you how it looks like so looks like this <coughs> so I'm gonna use this one uh, as a matte gap texture and the way it looks something like this okay all right I mean you could just use any textures you want I mean this is just to preview how it looks like in Houdini it doesn't really affect how <coughs> it looks in mobile because you need to recreate the shader by yourself in unity in order to make it look like this in the same way so doesn't matter if you do the things in Houdini but just in case because <coughs> you want to check how it looks like all right so let's make it a bit high res again 
like four. And let's see how we could send this to Unity. Let me also add a little smooth node in the end just to make the surface a little bit smoother. All right, that's good. Now, <clears throat> mm. let me first cache this using file cache so that I don't need to recalculate every frame each time going back and forth the VAT node. So I'm going to use the file cache to create a metable shape. All right. <clears throat> okay, meanwhile, let's try to open up Unity. Where is it? Okay. All right, so I'm going to create a new project. And use 3D URP. Version doesn't really matter, but uh, it has to be later than 2021.3 something. So I'm going to use 2022. Or uh, maybe not, because this is a bit buggy. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going to use choose 2021 3.22 F1. Should be okay. All right. And it needs to be 3D. URP because you're going to use the shader visual shader uh, visual shader graph yeah shader graph so keep that as a ULP and just name it as you want metable or lava animation VAT Something like that. Okay. Now, I think the file cache is ready. So, the problem with this geometry I mean, animation is that for each frame, the number of triangles is different, meaning it is a dynamic remeshing animation. So it's not a simple thing to uh, bring it to a other platform. Most of the time, if you're using standalone platform like Macintosh, Windows, or Linux, you could export it as a Alembic. <coughs> but if you're using mobile, mobile doesn't accept Alembic to play on runtime, so you need to use some other ways. And the the most um, used way to bring those this kind of complex animations to mobiles uh, <clears throat> is to use a things called VAT stands for vertex animation textures is the method to bake the position colors normals into a texture and read those textures uh, in a shader <coughs> to a vertex shader to replace uh, to recreate the animations uh, through running uh, reading the textures <coughs> so kind of a hacky way to animate things but it works pretty well in cheap devices like mobile so <coughs> it's pretty efficient so uh, that's what I'm going to use to export this animation. So in order to do that, you need to create a ROP network. And if you have installed the side effects labs, which is necessary, let me 
make sure that you have a side effects labs here installed if not you need to install it so if you open this side if you open this shelf there is a <coughs> button called update tool set and there if you don't see those icons then you need to update it or install it <coughs> if you have then you should be able to have a node called labs vertex animation textures for the rob network this is the one to export the textures and this is where you need a little bit of tips in order to be able to use in more valves correctly so i'm going to tell you how to set uh set this up uh <coughs> correctly all right so first thing you need to do is to make sure you are choosing dynamic remeshing fluid because this is changing the size of the meshes uh, number of triangles in each frame so you need to use this one dynamic remeshing fluid which is the most heavy um, <coughs> animation style so it will be better if you don't use it because these are more cheaper more have less size but if you want to have a really complex animations like these which changes the number of triangles then this is the only things left to choose which is a bit heavy and which it which will create a little big little bit of big textures as an output so if the mobile you're using is really like uh, low as a spec like if you're using like a five-year-old Android device, it might not work properly, but <coughs> still, <coughs> uh, it, it should somehow work. So I'm going to use the dynamic remeshing fluid. And the first things you need to be careful uh, is the format for the lookup table. Lookup table. <coughs> okay. Now it is in the default, the lookup table is set as PNG and texture format is uh, set as XEXR. <coughs> this is fine for the standalone, but for some reasons it didn't really work on mobile in this format. For the mobile, it also needs to be HDR <coughs> for the lookup table format. I don't know why, but that's the case and change this to the same EXR <coughs> okay so that's one important things you need to do next um, you need to s set the size of the textures uh, the width of the textures based on this width you can specify how many triangles you can have on one frame currently you can use uh, 23,000 triangles. Let's see how many triangles do I have here for each frame. So 7,000, 6,000, around 7,000. Yeah, 7,500. So probably maximum is 8,000, I guess this setup so I might be able to make this size a little bit smaller like 1024 in which it says that the uh, <coughs> maximum triangle numbers for each frame is 11,000 and still enough so I think this is good um, I guess it's better to make it make this width small as possible for the size <coughs> uh, issues uh, for to make the size to reduce the size so I'll just keep it as it is I am not gonna change this size okay so that's two part that I change one is these format one is this width based on this triangle numbers now <coughs> I also would like to use it for unity so I'm going to change this to unity here okay so and 
You could also go to the real time shaders to get the Unity package for the VAT shaders, which can be used in Unity later. <coughs> if you click here, it will <coughs> direct to the folder where you have a package JSON file, which can be used to install the shaders later in Unity. So I'll come back. So in terms of the setup, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, one thing I forgot is to check this export compressed normals in position alpha. This is necessary in order to use the normal set in Houdini and used in Unity. And also need to make sure that the normal attribute is being set to the point and currently not. So yeah, I need a normal attribute <coughs> to be created. So where should I do that? Maybe in the end. Normal. Make it point. All right. And that means I need to recalculate the file cache or resave the file cache. All right. So okay. So while we are waiting for this one, let's install the shader package for the Unity. So this is the package JSON for the Unity shaders and go back to the Unity editor. <coughs> Let's install this. So in order to install this, you go from window package manager and click plus add package from disk. Then open this package JSON. Okay that will import the side effects vertex animation texture project or package which have all mm -hmm. sorts of shaders you can use to visualize the VATs. Okay, this is necessary. Now, if it's been installed correctly, then you should be able to see under a package, side effects vertex animation textures and there is a shaders which you can use and i'm going to modify this shader later uh, later in order to be able to use with the matte cap texture all right the file cache has been created let's go back to the rop network and ooh, why did i set 34 needs to be 1024 Okay, <clears throat> so I think everything is good. Yep. And you also need to set the export uh, directory. Just gonna name this as metabol VAT. <laughs> okay. And it will give you geometry, positions, rotation, colors. I guess that's fine. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so uh, after you have set all these, you can now press render all. Did it create it? Okay, let me check. So if you go to the export folder, Metable VAT. Okay, not. It's not being created correctly, so I guess something is wrong here. Okay, I forgot to set the input geometry here. So you need to set the geometry. Now, let's do this again. Render all. <coughs> okay, it's running. My 
might gonna take a while. Oh, did it end? Okay, let's see. So, the texture that I have just exported is the lookup texture, which looks like this. So this is going to be used as a lookup table to specify which point in position textures is uh, related to a normal or color or <coughs> uh, time frame and so on. And let me also check the size. Okay, that looks okay. If the height is more than 8000 something, then I need to change the width to be bigger because the mobile only accept the maximum size to be 8124 or something like that. So <clears throat> needs to be less than 8000 for the height. Okay, so that's that's the first step. Now, after you have checked that the lookup table has been exported, you need to change this render pass to the second pass. Then do the render all again. Yeah, so you need two steps to render everything you need. All right. And after it's been exported, you're going to get color, which is all white. Uh, this is the position textures, which is going to be referred together with the lookup table and also a rotation textures. Okay, so that's the old texture that I, that's been exported. Okay, and you also have a geometry in FBX which has a bunch of triangles but doesn't really have a rested position yet. The position for each triangle is going to be updated with this position textures later with the shader. And under a Unity, you also have a material for the Unity, um, which is going to be used with the shade together with the shaders coming from the package that we have just installed. All right, so we're going to uh, drag and drop this whole folder to Unity to be able to use it. So I'm just going to drag and drop this like that. <clears throat> All right, so it's the Unity side now. Check the Metable uh, BAT folder, and first I'm going to set up a FBX geometry. Now, uh, first of all, you need to check preserve hierarchy, checked on, which is all explained in. Uh, this folder which you can access from a VAT node going to real-time shaders open unity package and guys and this guide explains everything you need to set inside unity but some of the setup doesn't really work for a mobile so that's what I would like to talk that's what I would like to show today so for the FBX, preserve hierarchy, mesh, uh, optimize mesh to nothing, and index format to 32 bits. This is to accept lots of numbers of vertices, even for mobile. <clears throat> and for the tangents, import. Okay, that's it. Apply. Okay, next, going to the textures. For each textures, just gonna go and select everything at once. Change this to change the non power of two to none first, and check off generate MIP maps because you don't really want any blur blurs and textures. And also change the filter mode to point. <coughs> Apply. Okay, and also let's make sure that we are setting the build settings to for the iOS. 
because we want to test for the mobiles which works the same for Android but I don't really have an Android phone right now so I'm gonna test with an iOS but it did work on Android as well so <clears throat> don't worry okay so I've just changed the platform to iOS so that I can build it for iOS now let's check each textures and the uh, additional settings that I need to set is this texture size, the maximum texture size. So check override for iOS and set the size to AT192. And the format is also important. You need to make it as RGBA half so that it's not going to be compressed and uh, precision is pretty high with this okay apply make sure everything is set like that yep okay so for the textures that's it now the last settings is for the material <coughs> um you need to set all the textures you have you got here to those slots so the position textures is which one position textures come to here rotation textures come to here color here well in this case color is all white so it doesn't really mm, doing nothing and lookup table to here and also uh, check the use compression normals all right so let me make sure that I save this okay and I guess that's it I, I think you were seeing some meshes doing something here now this is indicating that it is being animated using the shader now let's check if that's the case so I'm going to what I'm gonna do next is to place the FBX models in the scene and place update the material with this unity material here and if it goes if everything is set correctly you should be able to see the animation and if you play if you play it the animation should be running smoothly okay let me change the camera uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna move the camera here align with view all right then let's make the background of this camera to be black change the background type to solid color and make it black let's also make this uh, bring this game view to the right side and also I'm gonna make the display to the aspect ratio to something related to iPhone so iPhone 12 Pro portrait okay so based on this <coughs> camera I'm gonna tweak the position of this camera so that it's gonna fill within the range of camera all right so let's try playing this again okay so it's playing cool now, uh, additional things that I want to do here is to set the material, I mean set the shaders so that I can use the matte cap textures just like I used it for Houdini. Now in order to do that you need to tweak the original VAT shaders in Unity a little bit in order to be, in order to combine with the matte cap uh, methodologies. 
So let's do that. It's pretty simple. What I just need is the matcap textures. So I'm going to copy that this one to Unity project. So where should I copy it to? Just gonna copy it inside here. Metable flat. Okay, the format doesn't really matter for this one <coughs> because it's not like a lookup table or a textures used for a VAT. <coughs> I mean, in order to determine the position or rotation. So, in order to use this as a matcap textures, you need to e create your custom shaders for the VAT. So to do that, I'm going to copy one of the shaders listed here, coming with this package. So which one should I use? VAT dynamic remeshing. Yeah, this is the one that I should use. So <clears throat> I am going to alt drag to metable vat and rename this to something unique. I don't know. Um, matcap. All right. So this is the visual shading graph. If you double click it, you'll be able to see a graph like this, similar to Houdini <coughs> node-based uh, shader programming language. So, and what you want to trans, uh, what you want to uh, modify is this color value, so that I can use the texture coming from the matcap texture. So let's tweak this one. Instead of using the color map from the Houdini VAT, I'm gonna use this one instead. I'm gonna uh, update this one so that I can use the custom matcap textures by myself inside Unity. So I'm gonna add a texture to the parameter. Name this matcap text. Bring this down. <coughs> and in order to calculate the mat cap, um, maybe I could show some website for the algorithm. Uh, let me see. So I've just searched for the mat cap algorithms. Yeah, this is one great article showing how you could create the matcap shaders and this is where it is explaining the important part <coughs> so and it, which is somewhere around here so it is transforming the normal coordinate or normal direction <coughs> uh, <coughs> To, and it's using the normal direction to be mapped within 0 to 1 then use it to sample the textures uh, from the viewpoint so I guess I need to draw a little sketch for that uh, <clears throat> so so as you can see the matcap textures looks like this right <clears throat> and it's gonna sample the pixels within this circle um <clears throat> by using the normal direction from the geometry. Normal direction, right? <clears throat> and if the direction is facing left side, then it's gonna uh, left top side, then it's gonna sample somewhere around here. If it's facing 
front side it's gonna use the the center of the circle if it's facing somewhere around here it's gonna use somewhere around here and so on and since the normal map uh, normal direction is gonna be normalized the normal direction is always within this um, <coughs> circle okay so <coughs> within this uh, sphere should I say okay so <clears throat> based on that based uh, because of that you could you are going to sample some of the pixels based on the normal direction of any input geometry so you do need to need to have a normal direction for sure in order to use this but that's simple as that and <clears throat> the more you also, uh, the important thing is that you also need to take care of the view direction <clears throat> so if you if the view is like this if the camera view is looking at this directions then the normal that you need to look at are these <coughs> directions and uh, by projecting this normal to a view matrix uh, you could just get the normal X and Y which can be used as a 2d vector value <coughs> so you can ignore the Z value which is the height information you can just use the flat informations to sample to use it for the texture sampling yeah it's not really clear but um, that's how it works enough with the algorithm and let's do that so in order to do that you need to change the current normal direction of the geometry to and transform using the view direction to be able to use it easily and the normal direction is being set here for the geometry so <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna try to convert this normalized uh, transform this normal direction to a view matrix and to do that you there is a shader code shader node called transformation matrix <clears throat> not not this one sorry it wasn't this one transform yeah this one yeah so this transform node will transform the vector from some space to other space so in this case, currently it is in, in the world space. <clears throat> and I want to change the world space to a view space so that it's based on the camera view. And now and the type probably is the direction. And now as a result, you will be able to get a vector values in 3 uh, 3d but the x and y are the <clears throat> values that you are looking uh, the x and y are the flat flat uh, plane direction <clears throat> uh, from the view so that's why you want to use as a sampling UV for this texture. Now the maximum size of the U and V in this case X and Y is negative 1 to positive 1 so in order to make it a, in order to use it as a UV you need to remap so that the value is in between 0 to 1 so let's use a remap node <coughs> to remap from negative 1 to 0 all right, now you can sample this texture 
using sample texture 2D with this UV. Now the Z value is going to be ignored. <coughs> the only X and Y is going to be used like this by connecting like this. Okay, now finally I can connect. Let me make sure I save it. Let's connect this to a color. All right, <clears throat> now I am ready with the shader, I guess, I think. And let's also make get unlit so that I don't get any shadows for the matcap shaders. I mean, if you like to have the shadows, then that's fine, but I'm gonna go with the unlit. All right, <clears throat> so let's go back to the scene. And let's update the material shader. Select the material. Use the shader that I've just created, which is in this one, matcap. I mean, VAT dynamic remesh matcap. Okay. Now, which will add a new slot for the textures. And for this one, I would like to drag and drop this matcap textures. All right, works well, works pretty well. Pretty similar to what I see on Houdini, I guess. Yep. So now we are ready. <coughs> With all the setups. Okay, now it's time to check if it's really going to run on mobile. And if it runs, then my point for today is all <coughs> told okay so build settings iOS first I'm gonna set the bundle identifier orange jellies that's my company <coughs> just random <coughs> bundle identifier and the name of the product name yeah this is fine let's set the company name to OJ all right okay so build let's create the build folder and build it here which will create a Xcode project in order to build for the iOS. Okay. Wait for it. All right. Okay, so let's bring my phone screen here and see if it's gonna run. Okay, open the Xcode project. I need to set is the team so I'm gonna choose my team which I have registered in iOS and Apple developer account okay and let's see if it's just gonna run okay so let's play let's see if it's gonna build all right go for it mm hmm So this is my real iPhone display so if it's run it should appear here all 
I'm streaming it using a QuickTime <coughs> by connecting, plugging into my PC or Mac MacBook. Okay. There's a logo. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> One issue here. This is due to uh, the fact that um, in in some reason, for some reasons, iOS and default the mesh used in iOS uh, the index format index format becomes sixteen bit automatically, even if I set it to thirty two bit which means the number of points that can be used for the meshed in default is being limited to in maximum 60,000 something like that so I need to fix that all right okay so in order to fix that we need to go back to unity and make sure that when we load the mesh the mesh has to be loaded as 32-bit in terms of the index format. If you look at the FBX, you can see that I have set it to 632-bit, but for some reasons, when I build it for mobile, it becomes 16-bit. So I'm going to forcefully set it to 32-bit programmatically. And to do that, I need to enable read and write and place some simple script to this mesh. So I'm going to name this as mesh index format. All right. Okay, and open up the code editor for this mesh index format. And for the void start, I'm going to access to the mesh itself first. Um, mesh is equal to get component mesh filter mesh and mesh index format to 32 bit. So this is the magic lines you need to have in order to be able to show the geometry uh, properly. Okay, so save it, make sure it runs in Unity Editor first. Okay, let's try building this again. I am going to just use the, first I'm going to close the Xcode and use build and run and see if I'm going to get the application running properly now. Finger crossed. Building having the logo. There you go. Okay. <coughs> so <coughs> that's how you can fix the corrupted mesh. And now it runs perfectly on iOS and using the same method you could also run it on android devices as well <clears throat> okay so that's how i managed to run the dynamic remeshing animations created on unity created on houdini to for ios or android through unity I'm not sure how you can use do that in unreal because i'm not that fluent in unreal so uh, for now, 
uh, what I could show is the un Unity way, but at least it works. Okay. So that's it. Any questions? If not, I am going to end this live. <clears throat> okay. Well, thanks for joining and thanks for the comment. Oh, okay, I'm now looking at the comment. Thanks for all the comment. We do need to web GPU export one day. That's also one interesting things. I guess you could still use the VAT in web GPU as well because all you need to do is to write the shaders. So should be possible, I guess. <coughs> um, yeah, so that's it. So that's how you could use complex geometry animations on mobile. And together with some cheap shader like matcap, uh, you could have, you could use a cheap computational resource to show those yeah <clears throat> okie dokie so that's it thank you very much hope you liked it um <clears throat> and as always i'm going to upload the archive I mean, I'm going to keep the archive as it is, and I'm also going to upload the uh, project files <coughs> for Houdini, uh, probably for Unity in this case as well. Yeah, so that you can see both settings. I am not going to upload the built iOS project because you can just build it from Unity by yourself. So, yeah, <coughs> maybe Houdini and Unity project. To share okay so thank you uh, have a nice day have a nice week the week has just started but um, <clears throat> yeah hope you have a nice week um, so as I said I uh, the exhibition is done so I think I'm be able to spend more time on these live stream more uh, from now on so probably I'm gonna resume the weekly tutorial live <coughs> again okay so hopefully you could join some other days as well thank you good night we have a night Let me try to change if this is still gonna work by changing the boundary shape. Like making this two times taller. Still working. It should. Hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna end the live stream. Night.